Hi, welcome to Film Nerds. I am James. What up? And I'm Theo. How y'all guys doing today? And welcome to another episode of Film Nerds. It's, you know, that time again. It's the movie reveal. Uh, I apologize. The audio of the last reveal that we did on the last Christmas. Uh, for some reason, some of it got, de- like, parts of it got, got deleted. Uh, so... Not too sure what, 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 what we're going to do about that one. But here we are with another episode. And this time we have a movie that was requested on Twitter. Requested. See, we do listen to your comments. <laughs> what little bit that we do get. <laughs> I forget the guy's name. And I should have um, looked. Oh, I should have put her down. No, you shouldn't have said that at all. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm gonna find it before we get too deep, but today episode we are doing the Fountain. The Fountain, and it's uh, written and directed by Darren Arvosky. Uh, uh, I think I think I, that that's his name. <laughs> but um, if y'all have been following us for a while, we did one of his movies earlier, The Wrestler. That's why I popped up on that list face. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, probably. Okay. Yeah. So already, um, we know that he is uh famous for doing those ambiguous type meaning movies where uh, a lot of folks don't really understand, or it it goes over your head a little bit, you know. So we actually liked the wrestler, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. we did. You know, it, it, it was a pretty good movie. Man, we starting to do so many of these. We, <laughs> I'm starting to learn directors now. I'm like, oh yeah, I know who that director is. Oh wow! And the guy who requested the name is John Pollard. So shout out to John Pollard for requesting the Falcon. Yeah, John, he had your name up. He just clicked the wrong button and it minimized, so he had to pull it back up. <laughs> so we didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> so the Falcon is a. Is, is well, it's described as a epic fantasy drama, uh, an, an epic romantic drama, not fantasy, romantic drama. Um, but it it it, it blends several elements such as fantasy, science fiction, history, and spirituality. You know, um, because it's it is a very deep. I guess you could say poetic movie mm-hmm. you know so the movie stars Hugh Jackman and Rachel Wise oh, wait, we Reese. Need... Rachel Wise Reese. do we need to introduce his previous movies <laughs> <laughs> like we all know everyone should know who, who Jackman is but I think yeah he should be a household name by it's now it's like what Wolverine so <laughs> yes for those who know he, he did Wolverine he's done he was in, in the Prestige mm-hmm. with uh, with uh, Christian Nolan and Christian Bale. He also um, he done a couple of things. I know he was in that um, musical Maze. Um, Mizarro, yeah, yeah. He was in that movie and uh, in the films, but he's most known for for being Wolverine. Mm-hmm. You know, he been playing it for right. Over ten years, ninety percent of people should know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> this one actually works. <laughs> this and, one works. And for some reason, I, I always confuse Rachel, um, Rachel Rice, with um, Kenny Holmes and uh, Maggie G- Giggle Hall. Okay, I don't know, like, like they all look a little familiar, a little bit, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, Rachel, Rachel was the um, girl who played in the Mummy, right? And a few other movies. Um, let's keep my mind. I think the Mummy is one of the big, most popular movies. Yes, she was, cause she was the the, the wife. Okay, they made so many verses. <laughs> <laughs> the Brendan yeah. Fra- the Brendan Fraser um Mummy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I know. I want I want saying that, but I'm saying like they made more than one of the it was Brendan Fraser. Well, that um, it was three of them. Yeah. But yeah, she she plays his um plays Brenda Fraser's. Um, she didn't wife. come up in the second one, did she? Yeah, she did. What? Yeah, um, I believe she was all three of them. Yeah. Oh, she was his. That's right, she was his wife. I'm thinking that she was the reincarnated one. Nah, she was. Okay. She was the wife. Yeah. But. 
I like what she, I like her role in this one. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I threw you off. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, you're still on a story plot. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna try to explain the movie as best as possible. It's it's a very it's a very complicated story, mm-hmm. uh, but pretty much the story is a is about it. Well, the story contains three different storylines. Where one storyline is about a it's the like I'll say it's the past, mm-hmm. which is told. Through a novel written by Rachel's character, uh, Izzy. In the present. Yeah, in, in the present. And the novel pretty much deals with this. I want to. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this Cordisador who on an adventure finding, trying to find the tree of life, uh, who is sent by his queen. Who I guess you could say love interest as well. Well, she did say that if he go find it. She will marry him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so that story pretty much deals with uh, you know on, on a quest for immortality. Then the present, you have Hugh Jackman. No, of course, the Cortisador Door is also played by Hugh Jackman because both 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 actors plays three different characters in yeah. the movie. That one in the past, I didn't recognize him at first. <laughs> at first, yes, he because it was like, whoa, okay, where's Hugh Jackman character at in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was a little um, um, like, I'm like, what do you say? Is that Hugh Jackman? Oh, yeah, it is Hugh Jackman. Um, in, but in the in the present, he's a a doctor scientist, um, trying to find a cure for his wife's brain cancer or brain tumor. One the same, yeah. Um, of course, you know she's she has brain cancer. She's she's dying, and he pretty much using this tree sample that he found that he found on an um, excavation in Guatemala, mm-hmm. and it has some kind of form of healing properties, and they're trying to find a cure for for the cancer. Well, but she she ends up dying. Uh, Toward the end of the movie, and the third storyline is pretty much the future, where he is in this sphere, um, floating in space with this tree, mm-hmm. uh, and pretty much uh, he's floating in space going through a nebula. Yep. And at the end, uh, the star explodes. Mm-hmm. The nebula was dying. It had a dying star in it. Yep. And, <clears throat> and pretty much, it causes him to be one with the tree and it creates, the, well, because the tree dies mm-hmm. and it, he gives both well, he gives life back to the tree. See, I didn't understand that part too, because it was yeah. cause they were already expecting for the star to blow up, and that's what he kept saying is that you'll be reborn. So I don't, I didn't know where they was taking with that. <laughs> I mean, because because then we'll probably get into it, but mm-hmm. just between me and you, just um, I'm not sure if that was the same effect of what happened when the Cadiz store mm-hmm. did what he did at the end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So was that because if that if those two are linked in the same, then mm-hmm. it makes I guess I can kind of understand what was going on. So yeah. yeah, um, I yeah, uh, I was trying to think where we start off, but I say we can just break down each story. Yeah, so I guess we, should, we should, let's start off with the um, first Present. story. We want to go to the past. We can start with the past. Present. That kind of. Well, see, it's weird because it was a story, but but I get what you're saying. Yeah, because I I, look, I looked at it as a story, mm-hmm. uh, but I guess I'm trying to think on the lines of of Darren, I, I think it's more of this just a story. Because mm-hmm. basically, how with the um the ending with the future, how every, all three storylines seems to be 
connected. But then wasn't he writing something too? And uh Yeah. Which is why like it it is very confusing. Cause it's a story, but for some reason it feels like it is actual events that, that has happened. Right. Cause how the future interacts with the past mm-hmm. well the story. So I want to say it was kind of something like how the nether in this story was like the first movie, mm. but <clears throat> they just had two different stories. You know, they added the little space Cosmo type thing that they had going on. I'm, I couldn't tell if that was the doctor mm-hmm. and maybe it's probably the thing that throws off is that it's the same character. So because it's the same character, we kind of want to link them all together, which they are a link, but maybe not by the care by that person per se. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, well I was just telling her <laughs> <laughs> uh like okay, let's 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 start from the present. Um what what do you think about the, the, the present storyline? I would like to know if <clears throat> the research was done before the incident, which I wanna say it was because she was healthy and then they do show that it was she was kind of deteriorating so i i like that um that whole storyline that they had was pretty good um it it built up enough of their relationship because at first it is confusing when they do like the back and forth flashbacks but if you just isolate it by itself the story was pretty good um i think i got into the emotion that he was having mm-hmm. and i did like that the characters around him kind of picked up but then at one point they were so focused on themselves and they forgot <laughs> what he was really trying to do which I couldn't tell until I don't I think the guys knew but the females in it I don't think they knew until after you know knew what what he was why he was so oh, ambitious no I mean all of them knew but they but, fell back like for instance in the, like when like the, the parts where he's like a Every, it's okay so in the movie it's a new discovery to a point where i would say that using the properties that they that that they were using it wasn't healing the tumor but what it was was doing was it was de-aging yeah it was de-aging so literally it was going yeah it, it was pretty much if they had kept doing that pathway what they needed to do was re redo it again because you know with science they want to do like multiple times to make sure it's accurate but this is something that if they kept going, it could have been the next smart pill or technically our times are. I was probably said that wrong. <laughs> all all time. All time. All time. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is one of those things that it would definitely I could see that once they develop it and got more into it, it would have reversed the aging effect of the brain. So that's what it that's where it was going, where he was still focused on, hey, it's not solving the tumor. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep going, let's prep another one. So you could um his his all like his like yes his all purpose was doing this to find a cure right. for his wife, but at the same time, every, everyone else felt like it, he was pushing it too far mm-hmm. and becoming nearsighted on what the possibilities that they did have. Mm-hmm. You know, like they felt like, well, you you we have something great here, and just because you felt like oh it's not what. Is that the purpose that you kind of wanted? But you know, like, but you, everybody is in that. Okay, <clears throat> you are correct. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that they were correct because. But I just felt like they didn't have the sympathy or empathy because technically, either way, if he did find a, a cure, just a cure, just to slow it down, is still a great discovery because. Med- medical folks are always going to piggyback on that. They're going to piggyback on any type of progress. The thing was that <laughs> it still was working. They still had a win. It's just that one win they had right now, one win they could have had later. But it was just that they really forgot the reason that he was trying to do it. You know what I'm saying? And it's okay. I mean, it just, like I said, I just noticed that. Because they actually changed when they realized, okay, oh, his wife. And and, and that's probably him because he probably didn't. I get, I'll probably put it on him a little bit because I don't think people want to tell bad news to other people. And then he was all about work. So I think that's probably another thing because their, their tone did change after they found out what happened. So Yeah. 
like I w- I wasn't looking at, at at like 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 um from that I guess um perspective mm-hmm. like I was looking at, at at like I'm pretty sure all of them knew the condition of his wife because you know they knew her by name you mm-hmm. know and yeah but people don't go ahead <laughs> like I would think it was lack of um. Uh, empathy for him or not mm-hmm. you know it's just that they, they saw his behavior at work was kind of uh detrimental a little bit mm-hmm. you know and he was like he was just close-minded to other possibilities yeah i mean know? and i'm not liking that i mean i would just say like yeah they could know her name but they probably didn't keep up with the progress. And then, like I said, once they knew, but we I mean, don't I know. Pre- I mean, like, I'm pretty sure they knew what was going on with his wife. But, I mean, I, because I, 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 but, his, um, his boss did go. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. To, but she also changed because then she understood. It seemed like she understood a little bit more after she spoke with his wife. And that's, that's the only thing I'm saying is that I'm not really getting to, like, I understand where it was coming from. I just felt... It would have been nice for him to have one person that kind of understood what he was going through, you know, because he was going through a hard time. And I felt like they were just focusing on so much of and and it's kind of hard to say because we only see a glimpse because he was kind of on the loose end. I mean, well, he almost killed the doctor, <laughs> you know, so. But yeah, that. Yeah, we don't need that. I, I, I was just curious why they didn't like, you know, have him. You know, that one person would be like, hey, man, you know. <laughs> but it is what it is. It didn't take away from the story, though. Yeah, because, like, the whole time, you know, she's dealing with uh, brain cancer. She's writing this novel. Uh, and the novel, in a way, kind of tells the, the story. Because, mm-hmm. um, in a sense... He's trying to find a cure for, for a cancer, mm-hmm. and at the end, after she dies, he he switches up and, which actually goes back to his uh him being little him being, detrimental to himself, and I guess others a little bit because you know he's so, one track minded he goes from, one um, cure a disease to. Looking at death being a disease, now I want to cure death. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, and which that also kind of goes within the future, because I feel like the future story. Well, I guess touching this stuff a little bit, I'm trying to still stay with the, with the present. Uh, it it kind of tells the story of of guy uh, dealing with love loss, mm-hmm. you know, and trying to escape uh, the past. And hurt, and you know, trying to be, uh, be a mortal, why not? So, so she's writing this. Well, is well, Izzy, I think that's her name. Izzy, mm-hmm. yeah, um, Izzy, um, Isabella. Uh, she's writing this novel, and at one point she tells him, <laughs> "I got it." <laughs> it was like she got a Span a Spanish name, and then the story is also Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so like so at one point when she realizes that she is about she's about to die pass on because she keeps telling him that uh i am not afraid no more i'm not afraid i'm not afraid mm-hmm. and he, he he doesn't know what he does he, he refuses to let go and so she tells him that that she didn't finish the book but that he has to finish it and he would know what to write, you know, when the time comes, when that, and I, I, I really like the, that storyline as well. Like it was emotional, it was very well acted. Uh, I like how they kind of like what's the word looking for. Had the parallels, um, storylines going at the same time, mm-hmm. which kind of uh, played. I felt like even though the storylines were a little different, but each beat played the same. Because mm-hmm. um, I felt like whatever he did in the present affected 
each storyline because like when the wife dies, the, the tree in the future um, dies as pet that dies as well, you know. And then when he whisper on her neck, <laughs> yeah, there her hairs compared to where he touched the tree, the tree, the tree uh, thin fibers, mm-hmm. you know. I thought that was cool. Yeah, I, 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 I did like. That's I didn't get it because uh-huh. they showed the tree fibers first, but then when they get into the present, I was like, "Wait a minute, mm-hmm. is that that's the same type of thing where you know he's using his hands instead of using his lips?" You know? So. Yeah, like uh, like uh, uh, I picked up that uh, I picked up I picked up on I picked up on that too. Uh, just like it's, it's a scene where uh, um, the thing in the bedroom, whatnot. Yeah, I think that's what it was too. <laughs> yeah, because it goes from the tree to him and the back of the tree, and like. Oh, so in a way, the tree kind of represents her, right? Bit, you know, but that throws me off when he sees the entity of her, because mm-hmm. I still don't, I don't even think I got the whole finish. Finish it, finish it. Uh, I feel in like, the present, I don't. I feel like the, the finish was the, about the book. Okay, but then the book didn't get finished though. It oh uh, well, the ending is kind of is. Kind of like him finishing the end of the story. Okay. You know. Uh, what about that bathroom scene? <laughs> <laughs> what about it? <laughs> I thought that was cool. That was sad. It was a lot of emotions in that scene. She was just sitting there and then. I didn't, I didn't realize how bad it was. Because at first I thought she was like, oh, well, she's just outside in the snow. That was pretty cool. But then when, he, when she's there, it's like, I can't feel it. And he, like, he put the water <laughs> I was like, "Oh wow, that's that's deep." Yeah, because um, weapon weapon is um, he comes home and he finds her on the roof, um, stargazing, and it was a snowball. <laughs> <laughs> and as they about to go in, you know, he realizes that she's never wearing any shoes, you know, and like one, he he does get like they, they do but she's on a blanket, so that's why I didn't mm-hmm. really, yeah. Yeah, but you still you have yeah. no, no shoes on, no socks on. You outside the snow, uh, and they throw a little hint as well. We first um, comes out, he says it's cold, you know, and it doesn't really phase her, you know. Even when he 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 mentions that you know she had no shoes on, uh, she's not unbothered by it, right? You know. Then we when when they go into the bathtub, and when she shares that. She can't feel the water. That's when you, at the audience, um, and also him. Like I was like, oh, I feel, I feel like it works, it works so well because we, as the audience, finds out when, when he finds out that her condition is now uh, worse, yeah. will be worse. That now she she has no feeling of temperature in the um, limbs. And that's another thing too that uh, I think they did really good is that. I know I'm gonna say it wrong, but the seven states that the little steps, they they it kind of showed that she went through it very quickly to us because there's moments where you could tell, like even with that bathroom scene, it shows how she has the fear and and stuff like that. But then you also see how you can tell that for her, she actually went through those stages. But I guess we couldn't really see it because by him staying at work a lot, she internally went through those stages and it got to the point where she understood about the cycle and, you know, she's ready. You know what I'm saying? So it, it I kind of like the fact that how they did it. The stages, the stages of what? Uh, just, just the stages of, uh, what is it? I can't remember, but it's like the saving stages. Like, like if somebody have a life disease, like they'll have regret, anger, and it goes on to the mm-hmm. point where they get acceptance. So that, that stages. That's what I'm saying. Um, we get we get to see a little piece where, to me, I I came to the part where I I, I believe that she went through all the stages until the end, you know. Because mm-hmm. then she's also because you know denial is part of one of them too. So I I think that's where it got to the point. And then I guess her book was the was also the part of the acceptance, you know. Because I mean, it's something that she can give to him, and it's something that he will have. That will always remind her of, of their time together. And I think even with the story, it's kind of, I took it as the stories was about them 
in some type mm-hmm. of way, which most stories are based off of something. And I think it was kind of based off of them too. And well, actually it is. I mean, now that we think about it, you know, he was, he was doing literally what that story was mm-hmm. trying to do. So yeah. Cause, um, and, and, cause in the story, he's this conviction door, you know, searching for a way to save his queen and his country, mm-hmm. you know, and, she tells him the way to say and the only way to do it is to find the tree of life, which grants immortality. And, I, and even with the uh, with the villain in there, it will almost be like the villain was the tumor because it was like, well, mm. we don't want you to attack it <laughs> directly, you know, which most times you probably can't, you know what I'm saying? And it was just like, no, we got to wait. We're OK. We know what's going to happen, you know, but find this, you know, and it sent them on this journey to you know, to find stuff, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, because, like, the, his, his journey to find the tree and the, him being desperate to find it parallels uh, how he is trying to find the cure in, in real life to save his dying wife, you know, and how he's just so focused and desperate. He, like, nothing else matters, mm-hmm. you know, even in in the story where his man is pretty much um, is gone, he's dead. You know, he still is trying to press on mm-hmm. onward. You know, like same thing in in real life. You know, but they did kind of switch it. They made it where instead of it was for a woman, it was for the country to build up that purpose. So that was that was that was a little cool. <laughs> Yeah, it was still for for the queen. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> you know, I mean, save the queen, to save the country. You know. Oh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, mean it, it, it's, it's, it's <laughs> one of those things, you know. <clears throat> if she died, well, yeah, I guess it works the same way. Unless he decided to take over and be king. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but like you're like like one thing one thing I did like about uh, the story the overall story was I feel, I, like I like how it's it's complicated mm-hmm. but it's not convoluted right you know cause we, we like we talk about um, story plots and stories being convoluted you know like and, like a lot of things going on but nothing makes sense. Is this all jumbled? Uh, things that seem to be happening just because, you know. Mm-hmm. But here, I feel like everything is still is is real, like is real written and, and, and orchestrated, you know, to serve a uh, a single purpose. Right. You know, even though uh, even right now a lot of the meetings still uh, goes goes over my head a little bit, mm-hmm. like. And I made a point to try to come up, come up with my own conclusions, you know, to the movie versus going, you know, looking up, looking it up, whatnot, you know, there's many different uh, theories and uh, uh, videos explaining the movie. Yeah, I didn't, you know. that's one movie I didn't do that yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do plan on watching some after the podcast. Uh, but I, I didn't want it to watch them before the podcast, mm-hmm. you know, because I wanted my own point of view and opinions first before I go in. One of the things that threw me off was when reading the title, you know, how they explain, you know, when they give you a summary of what it is. Mm-hmm. I still don't see how you conquer death. <laughs> I just seen it like he's doing everything he can, because even at the end, and he still dies. But I, I'm, I'm to the point where I think. <clears throat> In the Cosmic story, it's more like he accepted. And then that mm-hmm. whole, because a lot of people, a lot of people say we shouldn't worry about death because, and I, and I just know that just period. Like, even if you take out the religious side, just the fact that it's, that's a process that we have to go through, mm-hmm. you know, born life. And then even if we look at nature, nothing technically dies. Really, it, 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 it doesn't that. And even if we go with science, science says what the 
about energy. Energy is never lost. It's pretty much transferred. Transferred. So that's enough. And we, we all can agree that if we want to say the soul, the soul is a form of energy. Some people may want to say. And then that that's the thing. That means that that soul ends up going to some type of it's transferred into something. And then we already know that if you take the body, <laughs> the body goes back to dust. You know what I'm saying? And we'll do that, you know, and that can go to anything. So it's yeah. Is my thinking is I feel like he conquers death I could like um it could like it actually goes and relates to the story she was telling to to him about the about the Mayans mm-hmm. and how there was this guy who who dies and they planted uh, a seed um, in his grave and it came a tree mm-hmm. and of course when it comes a tree like like the, his the, the body becomes part of the tree All right you know kind of like like you know as as you were saying the whole the circle of life mm-hmm. uh <laughs> you know borrowing from the Lion King. Uh, how you know when when a person or a living thing dies, mm-hmm. goes back to the ground and it gives birth to plants and you know other things and you know of course animals eat the plants eat the animals yeah. you know uh, <laughs> yeah the human body have a lot of nitrogen in it <laughs> <laughs> so great plant food <laughs> so I feel like you know even in the past when once he finds the tree of life oh that was so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> and like we finds it, and he he uh, takes the sap from from the tree, and you know he heals his wounds and start drinking it, and he reenacts the the story from the Mayans. All right, you know he dies, but he gives uh, life to mm-hmm. a tree. Well, not tree, but plants. Mm-hmm. What not? Pretty much symbolizing. Even though, you know, his he 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 physically dies, he still lives. Horribly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like sorry. he he still lives on because yeah. Uh, I guess his for lack of terms, his energy and presence give birth to mm-hmm. more life. Because it, and and that's what I was saying with the whole soul transfer type thing too. Because we know plants are alive because <laughs> mm-hmm. they die. So. That's where that energy went. Even though he died, that energy by science has to go into something else, and that's where we see the, and that's where that's where he went into the plants, and that's where I was thinking where he dies in the cosmo, his energy get transferred. Even though he dies bad too, like his body really bent backwards. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, the tree blossom. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's almost like whatever. The nebula dying, even though they said it will spark and regenerate more stars. Yeah, more stars, things around them. Um, by him also in that predicament, it do seem like his energy would have been transferred into the tree and into other, other, whatever can come out of that. Out of that fruits, because like in in, in that storyline, once um, that happens, the, the, the tree. Um, be flourishes and uh, it creates a fruit, and you see. I didn't see the fruit. Uh, you see, is he plucking, plucking, um, plucking it from? Well, not fruit, fruit, kind of like, like uh, it's a. Oh, that's where it came in, where it transits into the seed. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and she plucks it, right, and gives him, gives it back to him, in the present, and he plants it in the grave. Now that is kind of confusing. Yeah. Because like it's, now it's, it's, everything. <laughs> Uh, interacts with, with each zone light is now interacting with, with one another. Uh, I honestly have no explanation <laughs> or theories about what is going on, but uh, well, the only thing I would say is that since there's some people feel like time is just perce- perception, mm-hmm. and that probably would go with the whole fact where because it was the spiritual version of her from the present. Mm-hmm. Where she takes it and then somehow, um, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally like this. Uh, it did go with the fact that I would go with. I see what they was trying to do when they took the um, the seed and buried it, because in that way, 
her essence, even it just depends on how you look at this the afterlife. Even if some people feel like the spirit disappears or already get taken or moved on, it's still people feel like the body. Because I mean, we still have a uh, anytime you look at paranormal movies, horror movies, mm. <clears throat> all it takes is that person having, let's say, a book or their favorite earring, and you know that's when they were like, "No, we got to burn it." They're still here. This is attaching them, you know. So I, I get what that whole thing was like, putting it in there. And just even if it's just our body and the soul has passed on, people f- have that belief that it still can go into the tree. So, and I know some people who, who I've talked to, and I even thought about considering that too. Like, man, well, you know, take my ashes and, you know, put it in the ground and plant a tree on top of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but, uh, I kind of, I kind of got that part, but you're right. That transition where they literally linked all three of them together, it was really kind of confusing. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. Especially because you're thinking the the past is just a story that she's writing. Mm-hmm. You know, so it feels like it's more than just a story. So maybe perhaps she's writing a story, but the story has truth to what. I guess you would say them in another timeline, you know. Or, or maybe through. that's the thing. Maybe we need to stop and pull the story away, you know, mm-hmm. because it does seem like it might help a little bit. Because if she wrote this story, she probably thought, you know, just by doing research, you know, she probably thought that's something that she wanted to do, which kind of makes sense, you know, plant a tree when I pass, you know, because I wrote this story and she probably got the idea from just. You know, general other not well, ideally we <clears throat> write we write story you gain life. That's real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean that that's that's something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I wanna say that was the concept with the never ending story also. Mm-hmm. Is that it was given like yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's like 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 this is one of the movies where you really need to have an open mind and Or you're gonna watch it multiple times. Yes, yeah, like yeah, you, you really need to watch it like multiple times. Like like I'm I i do not know how many times you need to watch it, but <laughs> right. like I mean well the good thing about it, you're not gonna get bored of it, mm-hmm. you know. Like it's it's a good grab you, you know. But yeah, like you're not gonna you're not gonna get it off of one viewing. Right. Like it's that kind of movie. You know, it's 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 real trippy. <laughs> you know. Uh. But I mean I did like the the symbolism of planting a seed, giving life and, you know, pretty much starting anew. Mm-hmm. You know, because if, 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 like even though you know how it's done, like if, you know, it, it takes a while to piece piece the puzzle together. Or whatnot. I mean, it's like it's still you, you still get the gender idea. I believe, right? You know, the whole crazy life starting over. Mm-hmm. You know, moving forward. Starting a new journey. And then let's be honest, is that <clears throat> that's the only way you, I guess you can conquer death if that's what the mm-hmm. is the fact that you have to be moving on to more life. But then that's the thing, like I think everybody been thinking about it's like is death really something to be scared of? <laughs> you know, I mean is it cause like I said, if you take out religion and go by science we're just going to get recycled. You know what I'm saying? So, And that's where I think the movie did take this. I think that's that's the way it was definitely going. I mean, yeah, they had a little religion part in there, but the focus that I seen was that it's a phase that we go through, mm-hmm. you know, but we're always going to come back in something, you know. Because ideally, there, there is no cure, you know, to death. Right, like even though he he thinks death is a disease, but 
ideally, I guess I guess this is the conclusion he he came up with that even though maybe I can't kill death, I can create life from death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or kind of like how she had to blank. You know, she was like, you know, you'll figure it out. It's just another chapter. Mm-hmm. Cause then like you said, the life the if the story took life, then once he started writing, it it is never done. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's how I took it as. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, that's why re- no, that's the only thing <laughs> that did stand out is the fact that they definitely focus on the circle, you know, and then everything is just a, a phase. Mm-hmm. You know. Cause I don't think in present did he did he no no um, so what you thought about the inkings the tattoos oh cause that um, kind of threw me off a little bit too I I get the um the ring tattoo I get that I got mm-hmm. I got that one uh, now the ones on on his arms. Cause I can't tell if that was going back. Cause I can't tell if the Cosmo version is the present day version. I couldn't really tell if they were the same guy. Cause then when he says that now, actually, it does make sense the type of tattoos he has. And I just it just came up to me. <laughs> Besides the little ticks and numbers that he had, mm-hmm. because they were in band shape. I mean, most people know that you know the tree. That's how you count the age is by the rings. Mm -hmm. But I know he was saying like all these marks is my time with you. Yeah. um, yeah, uh, I I couldn't, I wasn't sure where he was. What was that to the tree? Or was it to her? Or was that just a, I think it's both. I think think the tree represents her. Right. And we did come up with that. And the images that he sees is like, has images of her reminding him of what of what he lost. Okay. Because I feel like that a whole storyline of him in the cosmos in the future um, is just him dealing with what he lost and trying to move forward. So you think they're both the same? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I feel, I feel like the, the, the tattoos is like his memories and counting down the years of, of being with the tree or her, no, know. and that's right because he still had the the pen. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, that, that that would be my guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but you like like this like this is still a, a trippy 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 movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so let's talk about the characters and the actors for a bit. That's seems to be less. <laughs> that's confusing then that's a story uh how you thought about you know the characters any particular one like well, the past present or future or? Well, <clears throat> i feel like the, i feel like they probably wanted the same oh well, the okay okay yeah. well uh i do that um i actually like the performance by both mm-hmm. is what kept me because because yeah. <laughs> it threw me off when it started switching. Now, mm-hmm. I did enjoy the past because it was just, oh, man, this, this is going to be adventurous. So <laughs> I'm, I'm into that type. So the, just the whole following something. and Because uh, I was really disappointed when he couldn't kill the guy. I was like, oh, my God, where is why He's got a perfect <laughs> child. Let's see him do something. But um, the acting was really, really good. I didn't even expect it to be what it was. So mm-hmm. it kept me in tune with the way that they were acting. You know? And it threw me off because I didn't even recognize she was a, <laughs> the, the queen a little bit either because she was hiding. Then I realized, I was like, oh, you know what? Uh, well, this brought me noticing it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how come her lipstick as a queen is real <laughs> is real full? But then when she was in present, you know, they ain't hook her up as much. <laughs> but that's just something minor. Just just throwing it out there. But uh, well, cause I guess because like, it, like it, one of them represents she's of power. Yeah, you know, and uh, something to be attained and acquired, you know. Yeah, but her lips was properly nut. 
but it's just something that yeah, I just I mean, love. It, it was you know? design choice, like you said. Like it's you know, as a queen, you're supposed to be you know, someone to be desired, you know, look for. Okay. But in the present, she is uh, a regular person, and she's suffering from. Well, she's dying. Yeah. You know. Okay. It's, it is what it is. <laughs> um. Well, that's something else. Um, somebody else might do it. I might have to look up to if they did anything like that with the makeup. But no, I enjoyed the acting on both. It was, it was it's what kept the movie very interesting for me. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Um, I do. I, 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 I did like both um, actors' performances. I feel like both of them did like real good job. They both played it very emotional. Mm-hmm. It wasn't over top, even though um, it could. It would be really easy to play it over the top, but I, I, I like how grounded they kept the performances. Right. Uh, especially, um, like, especially Rachel. Like, I really loved her performance. And, and like, this is honestly the first movie I've seen her, even though this is an older movie back in 2006, where she, where she played a very serious character. Mm-hmm. You know, because The Mummy was more... Um, comedy <laughs> and I can't think of any other movies right now that I've seen her played in I don't think I've seen it I recognize her name but I yeah. haven't seen any besides the mummy this is the only scene of hers yeah and I like I feel like I feel like she, she did a, a, a remarkable job you know especially you know, you know playing a dying woman uh and then Hugh Jackman, of course, you know, as always, you know, he, you know, he, 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 he was, you know, stellar, um, especially playing uh, different versions mm-hmm. of, I guess I could say of the same guy, you know, for, but... In, but it didn't seem like it. Yeah. Cause like, they each kind of have their own, uh, I guess, I, I'm not going to say personality, but different... Pains, mm-hmm. you know, because the future, you know, he living in the pain of having lost someone. Right. In the present, he living in the, in the pain of keeping from losing someone. You know. Well, yeah. Well, they are losing Spain. <laughs> yeah. in, so, in, so I get you that. Yeah. yeah. So in in the past, you know, he's trying to, yeah, save Spain, save the queen. I guess the same thing what what he's, what he's doing in, in the in, in the present as well. Mm-hmm. You know, but you know, like I felt I just felt like especially looking at the present, I feel like this character was one for well super super minded, but he had purpose, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, he came off as a jerk in the beginning, but you kinda get to know why. Why? And and they actually explored that too a little bit where his boss, <clears throat> she kind of like, well, you should be with your wife. You should be with your wife. And that is two paths that people can't go, mm-hmm. which I did like that they could explore that. Because some people can be like, hey, I'm just going to enjoy my time with you the best way. But, and it depends on what type of person you are. He also had the, op- he had that choice. He had the mm-hmm. choice to be, and, and I, and that's where I was saying where I felt like they weren't sympathetic because I've seen that he had two choices. Yes, he could have been like, hey, I'm going to make the last days the best I can. Or because he has the means, I'm going to cure you. That way I can spend multiple time with you. You know, it's just the, and that's where I like where it was that choice because he had that. And, and nobody knows what they're going to do in, at that moment because even with when he do find it, it's kind of bad, you know, and then, yeah. then it's like, he's trying to do everything he can to bring her back. And, yeah, you know. yeah, like, like, by that time, like, it's too late because yeah. the, uh, they find out that the cure works. Right. But right as they find out the, uh, it works, that it kills the, kills the tumor, in, well, in, in, in the monkey they were testing, uh, she dies. Mm-hmm. You know. And, and she just, weak. <laughs> It's a week, but yeah, yeah, you know, what was I gonna say? Yeah, because like, in those choices, like, no one could really say 
what, what choice got? is right or wrong. That's correct. Because like one hand, he's like, okay, I want to save my life, my, save my wife, mm-hmm. you know, and I can't save her if I'm being with her. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I do want to be with her, you know. But if I'm with her, I can't save her, mm-hmm. you know. So and that's why I kind of agree with the even with the studies. The thing is that with these people, they already have everything written down and everything. So mm-hmm. even if he died that day. They can always go back, look to see what they did, and recreate. So I, that's why I kind of got what he was trying to do. And maybe that's probably me. If I feel like I have the power, well, I don't know. People tell me I got a hero complex. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I would definitely be like, man, forget this because we can always duplicate this. We know what we have. They created the, they, you know, they already created the compound. They have the notes. They could do this at any time, you know? <laughs> What's what's a month later? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So especially when and then that's the thing, even when she passed, do you not think that they didn't go and <laughs> go to the medical journal board and, and promote like, hey, we found this, you know, th- this age, you know, regeneration properties. Come on, they did. You know, so I you know, but the way he played it, you know, it wasn't like he was playing three Three different people with different outfits. Mm-hmm. It literally was like it was three different people, and that's kind of hard. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Eddie Murphy tried to, you know, did it a little bit, <laughs> you know. But yeah. they all was kind of similar. But yeah, he did literally three characters, and they were unique to each other. So it's, um, Tom Hardy in um, in Legend, you know, he he plays. I haven't seen it yet. Me either, but like um. I actually have it. Uh, I've been I've been meaning to go watch it. I just haven't had the time to watch it. But I yeah. keep getting confused because there's so many legends. Oh, I'm thinking legends. You said legend. Okay. Yeah, um, with Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy like um, he, he plays two brothers. One is gay. One is um, oh, that's gay. like a court drama, right? No, um, like a gangster film. I thought there there's a movie with him in there where he plays this two brothers, but they're well. What I seen there was in a court courtroom so that probably yeah. it's probably the same one it's just that because if he's in a gangster movie he probably won't like go up here <laughs> in the courthouse or get arrested but yeah i think that's what it was because yeah. one of them is like big right i think so i think one is a little more you know well tom like, tom hardy is skinny i've seen the person <laughs> he's, he's he's little but what, um, he's short I, I oh yeah yeah that. yeah he is short yeah. i didn't realize i thought he was like a 5 11 but when I seen him on that stage, it, and then he walked up, I was like, "Oh, we got little girls." <laughs> Yo, I because like um because when filming The Dark Knight Rises, you mm-hmm. know he's you know he's real Jack. They they shot him. You on. still ain't seen Warrior, have you? Nah, I haven't seen. Warrior. You gotta see Warrior. Oh my god, <laughs> I got an argument with somebody about that. I was like, I think that was his breakout role. And I was like, Nah, that wasn't it. But this was before The Dark Knight. And Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like, man, the warrior, warrior. He, when I think of him, that's all I can see him is this real big dude. Like mm-hmm. he is super big. But yeah, wait, he was Bang, right? Yeah, he played Bang. Yeah, so this was before he played Bang. So you, that body type, that was not how he is. Oh, oh he is. <laughs> he is very like lean. So. Yeah, cause, um, cause, uh, he also plays in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Inception. Right, right. And he was. I don't even remember in Inception. <laughs> uh, he plays a guy uh, when it was in uh, in the dream. He walks up with the little uh, 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 game launcher and talk about um, like 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 sometimes you get a dream, you get uh, you get a dream a little harder, a little yeah. bigger, and you put up the, the, um, that that little, little, um, little launcher and, and blows up the um, the tower. Nah, only because that wasn't like a big thing that caught to me. Because I'm still on to the part where they were flipping like in the car mm-hmm. and those scenes and the scene where. Uh, the Asian guy was fighting. Those scenes is what stood out to me because <laughs> they were kind of awesome. You know he's not Asian, right? Who? Jordan Gordon. Jordan Gordon is not, is not Asian. I thought it was an Asian guy in there. No. Okay. Well, I mean, there's an Asian guy in there, but you, you talk about Jordan Gordon. No, I don't remember who it was. I don't recognize the no, I, person. I'm, no, I'm, I'm telling you, you're talking about Jordan Gordon, the one who was fighting. That was I thought Gordon. it was an Asian guy fighting, too. Okay, well, I was that, wrong, man. That was, that was Jason Gordon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, the fight scenes is what stood out to me. Especially when they was fighting upside down at yeah. the elevator. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was And Joseph. when the car was flipping over in slow motion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, 
<laughs> well, it's been a while since I've seen it, but okay. Well, I'm sorry. I have to go back and look at it. <laughs> and go look for Tom Hardy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, we did get off like topic. <laughs> to yeah, back to the fountain. Uh, but yeah, also I guess we go. We would do for yeah, our okay. thoughts. What your final thoughts about the movie? I'll keep it simple. Um, is it a little confusing? Only because it makes you think. And if you if you just turn it on, you know, it just uh, it catches you off guard with the whole thinking thing. The visual effects I like. So I'll definitely say that. The visual effects was light and the acting that I like. So everything else is... If you are kind of lost, it's, it doesn't throw you really really off mm -hmm. it's just some things that it's it's a good conversation piece like if you took this how we're talking like we're still trying to you know it's a nice discussion to have with somebody afterwards so other than that um acting is great lighting great the point i seen was great just only con is this i didn't understand everything that was going on or maybe i couldn't understand how the director and the writer was trying to connect everything or maybe it wasn't maybe it was just meant for us to discuss it well, there is is the um, director and writer, director and writer, right. uh, and yeah, like it's a very hold on, let me. That, that, my my gosh, is calling me. <laughs> I got to tell her like, hey, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it, it is a very complex movie. Like as I said before, the plot is not convoluted; it's complicated, but. Mm -hmm. You can understand it once you have uh, multiple viewings and really get into the, deep into the movie. Cause like yeah, like from 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 jump, you are gonna be a little lost. Mm -hmm. Cause you know it, it breaks down. Like it starts off with all three different stories going on, you know, and it, like it kind of um, it, um intercuts between between uh, storylines. But you know, I feel like the movie is, is pretty good. It's it's real written, real directed, real acted. Uh, trying to understand, like trying to understand the movie, I, f I feel like will make a very good com um, conversation piece um, among among people. But now I feel like if you're a type of person who favors dumbed down movies, this movie will not be for you. Idiotic. <laughs> you know like like this movie is definitely for the ones that want to have their mind blown and want to go and think you know mm -hmm. I mean I, I prefer those kind of movies which is one of the reasons why I like Christopher Nolan you know like uh, I, I prefer movies that kind of you know make me have a different point of view and think about things differently but um yeah I, I like the movie uh, I probably had to go back and watch it a few more times to see what new or what, what, what new meaning I can pick from it. Mm -hmm. so, um, going to our uh, grade scale. I got him give it eight bucks. Mm. Well, you give it eight bucks, but for, for the ones that doesn't know, we do it from one to fifteen dollars, and we rating we rating it as how much will we pay based on how we like the movie uh, how much will we go see this movie so he said 8 bucks 8 bucks I'm going to give it a, a, a 10 uh, I liked it uh, complicated very complicated but you know I, mean? I, I enjoyed it <laughs> you know, from, from all angles of you know from all doing that. I, mean, I, I enjoyed it I liked it okay Anything you want to say before we end this? No, no, no. I have nothing to say. Just, uh, well, you're already going to say what I need to say. Hey, somebody uh, request a warrior for us. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, um, that will do it for today's podcast. And remember, if there's any movie you want us to do or a topic you want us to talk about and discuss, 
let us know drop a comment below like and share this video and also subscribe just subscribe to our channel you know we need those subscribers we need likes so hit this like button subscribe to our channel and ring the notification to be notified when we uh release a video we try to drop at least two videos a week sometimes three um uh and our social media accounts will be in the description below so hit us up, follow us, uh, friend us if you if you want. Uh, <laughs> I can't I can't say we will accept everything, but <laughs> well, I will accept you on my uh, Facebook page, my active page, yes. You know, but with that said, I'm James and I'm Theo, guys. We'll see you next time.